We're counting down the most influential NBA celebrations ever to keep getting better. Can you guess number one? Will yours make the list? We're as excited as Norris Cole during Ray Allen's final saving shot. Ten. The 2000 Olympic squad went undefeated in Sydney in 2000. Vince Carter's highlights stole the show, but Air Canada's dunk of death had the anti-American crowd's approval as well as hype man Kevin Garnett. Oh! Fresh off his dunk championship, Vince Carter celebrated the greatest dunk in Olympic and arguably all of basketball history. Certainly worthy of number 10 on our list. Nine. This player-coach duo doubles up our celebration on different nights. Dwayne Wade, one of the most dynamic players in league history, has thousands of highlight dunks and memorable moments. In his final season, at playoff hopes on the line, number nine hits different. Back to Dwayne, shoots. No, he couldn't get it off, now fires it up. Back it in! It counts! It counts! The Heat win the game! Dwayne Wade won it for Miami! 126 to 125! Wade had this to say about the moment. I always wanted to run the double on the score, say, but you think I kind of, I was going to the, my teammates, and I was like, nah, it's about me. <laughs> and, and I jumped on the score, say, because I've always seen, like, Jordan and guys celebrating Kobe, and those guys do that. And when I jumped up there, the fans was giving me life, and I just was like, yeah, yeah, it's my house. Not to be outdone, Coach Spo pulled the full Wade imitation with Wade watching from the stands, leaping us into our next celebration. Hey. After Jordan retired for the second time, it opened space for a new champion. For the next seven years, the Spurs or Lakers would win or appear in the finals. This period featured all-time superstars in Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal for the Lakers, and Tim Duncan, David Robinson, Tony Parker, and Manu Ginobili for the Spurs. During this time, the Spurs won two at the front and back of a Lakers three-peat. It also featured two of the top five coaches all-time in Phil Jackson and Greg Popovich. In the 2004 conference semifinals, knotted at two games apiece, Duncan hit a wild jumper, putting the Spurs up 73 to 72 with 0.4 seconds left. Phil Jackson took a timeout, leading to this. Four remaining. Here they go. They get it to Fisher. He scores! Oh, Eric good. Fisher scores at the buzzer. It'll have to be reviewed. They'll review. The Lakers are going to run to the dressing room and, and take the A spot with them. Reggie Miller and famous director Spike Lee had one of the best rivalries in professional sports. Spike Lee, who directed He Got Game with Ray Allen, is an avid Knicks fan. For decades, he had been courtside sporting different Knicks jerseys, sporting the blue and orange at the Mecca, Madison Square Garden. Reggie Miller, one of the most clutch and dynamic three-point shooters ever, loved to go back and forth with Spike. In 1995 playoffs, the two rivals faced off. The Knicks were up six with 18.7 seconds left, leaving Spike and the Knicks crowd in a celebratory mood. Then this happened. For both teams in a playoff game. Miller for three, and he got it. Reggie Miller with a clutch tray, and it's 105-102. And a steal, Miller retreats to the three-point line and hits again. Endo last year. Miller okay. hits two. Anthony stumbles and falls. Here's what Reggie had to say about Spike. What about Spike Lee? Spike who? <laughs> Six. Six. We head to 2019, where a long-running feud between Damian Lillard and Russell Westbrook came to a head in the playoffs. Here we go again. Damian and Westbrook. Westbrook had told the media earlier in the season Lillard didn't deserve his all-star spot. Things escalated from there, leading to a pair of memorable celebrations. Lillard does a great job. Look at, look at him. He's pumped up. He stops Russell Westbrook, and he comes down, and now he's feeling good about his D, and stops from 38, and drops it. What does he say? Bombs away. Leading to Lillard's exclamation point. Out. Lillard. A chance to send the Thunder home. Lillard, long range three. And it's good! At the buzzer! Damian Lillard! Are you kidding me? 50 points on that one. That's amazing. Lillard waved goodbye to Russell Westbrook and Paul George before his brother tackled him. Paul George had this to say after the game. Yeah, I mean, that's a bad shot. Um... Bad enough for number six on our list. Five. On our test, AKA Meta World Peace, a former bad boy and elite defensive player. He was a main instigator in the Malice at the Palace, a huge brawl that spilled into the stands during a Pistons Pacers game. 
Afterwards, he received the longest suspension in NBA history for an on-court incident. During his time away, he sought counseling and returned a more thoughtful person. In 2010, as a part of the Lakers, he helped them to a Game 7 win against the Celtics in the finals. We check in at his press conference as he celebrated the championship and his newfound thoughtfulness. I got Wheaties! I got Wheaties box! Get my Wheaties box! I got Wheaties! You don't seem excited! I'm leaving! Y'all don't seem excited. I'm all excited. I feel like I'm... I feel like the oddball. Like my kids here yet? Not yet? They must not want to shine. Come on. All right, right a question. All right. I, I'll be here all day. Well, not all day, because I do want to go to a club, so I'll stay for, I'll stay for a while. We'll, we'll, we'll have some fun. Mark will cut us off. Hey, people over there on your laptops. <laughs> hey. Hey, all the way over there on your laptop. Acknowledge me, please. <laughs> hey. So... I'm blessed, and um, I totally forgot the question you asked. <laughs> what time is it now? Why are you staring at me, daughter? <laughs> Opportunity, and um, you know, I'm really, really, um, I'm just enjoying this, and I just can't wait to go to the club. <laughs> it feels so good, and he passed me the ball. He never passed me the ball, and he passed me the ball. <laughs> Kobe passed me the ball. <laughs> And I shot a three. <laughs> and Phil didn't want me to shoot the three. I heard him. Because he's the Zen master, so he can speak to you without, you know? He can speak to you, and he don't need a microphone. He just, you can hear him in your head. Ron, don't shoot, don't shoot. <laughs> I said, whatever. Boom, <laughs> three. Woo. Yes. All right, I'm done. Hey, he said I'm done. <laughs> oh, see you later. Come to the club. Cool. Alan Houston and Dikembe Mutombo pair to make an unlikely double celebration. Mutombo from the Democratic Republic of the Congo was a defensive monster, using one of the most iconic gestures after each block, the finger wag. In 1994, after sneaking into the playoffs at 42 and 40, the ace seeded Nuggets faced the number one seed Seattle Supersonics and superstars Gary Payton and Sean Kemp. Matumbo and the Nuggets made NBA history by becoming the only ace seed to beat a number one seed, bringing us this iconic moment. Eight seconds, Perkins batted back out, McMillan, another three, way short. That's it. Matumbo embraces the ball and the unlikely upset. One of the great upsets in NBA playoff history. The eighth seed, a team that was two games over 500 on the season. The Denver Nuggets, youngest in the NBA, have beaten the team with the best record in the NBA, the Seattle Supersonics. And Dikembe Mutombo, one of the stars. Not to be outdone, in 1999, Allen Houston, the longtime New York star, took a rogue Knicks team at barely above 500 from an A seed to the NBA Finals, becoming the first A seed to pull this off. In the first round upset against the number one Miami Heat, they had to take down Defensive Player of the Year Alonzo Mourning and star Tim Hardaway. And 4.5 left in the game. That was not a good set. The Knicks have to get themselves two chances to tie or win the ball game. Four seconds. Van Gundy calls a play, a triangle. That usually means something for Ewing. Out of Houston. Houston ducks under. Got it! With eight tenths left. Three. LeBron James spent his first seven years trying to get his hometown team a championship. The city of Cleveland was stuck in a 50-year sports curse where the Browns, Cavs, Indians slash Guardians had all failed to win a championship. Despite his efforts, he only made the finals once, getting swept by the Spurs. He then made the decision, joining the Big Three in Miami and endured a terrible breakup with Cleveland fans. After four years, he returned home to the Cavs where he faced a dynasty in Stephen Curry, Kevin Durant, Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, and the Golden State Warriors. They would battle four straight times in the finals with Golden State winning three. But in 2016, LeBron would bring the championship starved city of Cleveland, a championship and a citywide celebration. Catches, one dribble, steps back, puts up a three, one go, rebound, tips, hit by Spades, final second, it's over, it's over! Cleveland is a city of champions once again! The Cavaliers are NBA champions! I set out a goal two years when I came back 
to bring a championship to the city. I gave everything that I had. I poured my heart, my blood, my sweat, my tears to this game, and Cleveland, this is for you. Oh. After many years of heartbreak, we finally got a championship for the city. Stop the show for it. Kobe Bryant enjoyed one of the most exciting careers on the brightest stage and one of the most abrupt, tragic, and public deaths in recent history. Before Kobe was Kobe, he was chasing down his first championship with Shaq in 2000. Although Shaq had taken Orlando to the finals in only his third season, he hadn't been able to get over the hump to a championship in his first three years as a Laker. Facing a loaded Blazers team in the Western Conference Finals, the Lakers had game seven on their home court. Kobe and Shaq found themselves down 13 entering the fourth quarter. They would storm back, ripping off a 15-0 run, culminating in this. Fitting number one, we go double celebration with two firsts for the NBA's GOAT. In 1989, Michael Jordan had one playoff win to his name. The Bulls were matched up with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Tied at two games apiece, Jordan will come the first player in NBA history to hit a buzzer beater in a winner-take-all playoff game. Dance gets the ball back, drives to the hoop, and lays it in with three seconds to go. with an injured groin have played the games of their lives considering the importance this afternoon. And Craig Elo, who has scored 15 points here in the fourth quarter, has played big in the big period, the biggest of the season for the Cavaliers. And three seconds remain. Chicago, with the timeout, now has only a 20. The Bulls have three seconds to try a shot and try to win the game. You'll see the drama unfold. Sellers will inbound. Sellers has Jordan. Jordan with two seconds to go. Puts it up and scores at the buzzer. Michael Jordan has won it for Chicago. Michael Jordan hit the basket at the buzzer. As a disconsolate Lenny Wilkins leads the four for the second time today. The visiting team have won the deciding game in an opening round series. Right now, let's go right over to JB with Michael Jordan. Um, Michael, now I thought you weren't supposed to be feeling so well coming into today's game. We came in, we stuck tough, we hung right in there, gave ourselves a chance to win, and we won the ball. I don't care how many we won in, we won, and that's all that counts. And the Big Apple waits for you. We're going to New York, baby. After setbacks against the Celtics and Pistons, Jordan came back more dominant than ever, storming through the 1991 playoffs with only one loss, while exacting revenge against the reigning champion Pistons. In the finals, he would also end the Lakers' Showtime era in what would become Magic Johnson's last full season. All the intensity, all the competitive drive take us to the top celebration. Bulls beginning to celebrate. Pippen comes away with it, and the Chicago Bulls have won their first ever NBA championship.
Thanks for watching, subscribing, and please comment your favorite moment.